You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. It's all about you with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Dr. Martha will offer various solutions that will expand your horizons, offer solid possibilities, and guide you through developing the skills needed for your desired outcome in everyday life. So now, please welcome the host of It's All About You, Dr. Martha Latz. Welcome, welcome to all returning and new listeners. I am so delighted to once again share this time with all of you live broadcasting from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am your host, Dr. Martha Latz, for the show It's All About You from the East Coast, where I am a licensed marriage and family and relationship and life transition coach with an office in South Florida. Get back in touch with me, leaving your thoughts and your questions and your suggestions for topics. And to learn more about me, go to my uh, page at www.bbmglobalnetwork.com, my own web page at www.auniquetherapycenter.com, or call me at LATS2000 at AOL.com, and I will listen to you via the email, and I'll send you a um, a response back during my next time or my next broadcast, if you would like. I am so sorry I missed Memorial Day, and I just missed D-Day, June 6th. So to veterans and families, thank you for your service, and also thank you for the Baby Boomers boom. Admiral William McRaven said, if you want to be the change in the world, you start by making your own bed. I'm thinking, did I make my bed this morning? I think I did. On a lighter note, yum, it's chocolate ice cream day. Mmm, how many varieties of chocolate ice cream are there? I may have to explore that in depth. Want to join me after the broadcast? To, I want to shout out to Nancy at Adesto Island in South Carolina. You, you left me a message and you said you started listening to my show on BBM while in uh, New York City. Thank you for telling me that you have found my shows helpful for your everyday life. Let me hear again from you and listeners, uh, all listeners, in fact. And here's what's so exciting. You can give me a call right now at 1-866-451-1451. That's right, and we can talk directly on air. Again, the number is 1-866-451-1451. So don't be shy. Remember, this is where the world comes to talk. So call and let's talk. The topic for today's show is uh, something that we're all involved in, either at the very beginning of, in the middle of, or at the end uh, end of. It's caregiving. And uh, there's challenges for the caregiver. So the caregiver challenge is for boomers and for millennials. So talk to me about that and give me a call. The reason I got interested in this topic is that my husband and I were recently out on two separate occasions, uh, 
with uh, three other couples involving just bring yourself. Uh, the other was a potluck and socializing and both involved good food, drink, music, and conversations on all different topics with various points of views expressed. In, in both settings, though, the topic quickly turned to caregiving and the frustration that the person has for the person that they are caring for or coordinating care for, like an elderly friend or a sick friend, neighbor, spouse, family member, um, as a professional caregiver or just as the family member uh, being a caregiver. These were the frustrations. I think you've all kind of felt them. Uh, No matter where the caregivers found themselves on that caregiver scale, and it's more like a Richter scale, and what they all had held in common and expressed or unexpressed was emotional frustration. And I noticed this because it, it always began with how much, how much time is to be given, how much responsibility am I supposed to have, how much to intervene and when. They all concluded that no matter how much, it was never enough or appreciated. You know, uh, stating never enough is never enough with couple times and with me and with giving caregiving and forget it, I just throw my hands up. This common thread that emerged very clearly uh, was that everybody, even within the same family, defines caregiving and how much time to give uh, to this task and how I receive it or how I grant it is very different. Each person in one uh, form or another said, I would really listen and really like a show like that. And guess what? Then all eyes turned in my direction. Ah, I thought, hmm, that would make for a great broadcast. And uh, how does how does this all begin? How does caregiving become this topic? Well, I I thought about it deeply, and I thought, you know what? We've all gotten hijacked in what I term the favor marathon that turns into an entire day, you know those. You say, yes, you are more than happy to do a, a favor for someone, and then your entire day is gone. Caregiving, it, as during these conversations, had been expressed a lot like that, only that it's not just once in a while. In most ca- cases, it is daily, weekly, monthly, and year- yearly for family members or friends. Give me a call. Let's talk about it at one six six at one eight six six. I'm sorry, four five one one four one five. Again, that's eight six six four five one one four one five. In the meantime, Joyce, um, as I was preparing for this radio broadcast, um, sent me an email, and she said I could share it online. So her, he, she describes herself as, as married and having grown children and grandchildren and caring for her mother. She says, Dr. Latz, um, I would like to share what a typical day is like for caring for my mother who still lives on her own. Um, three phone calls during the day after multiple phone calls are still checking on what time I will pick her up for the appointment and what we will be doing. Let me explain here. There is absolutely no diagnosis or even the start of dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, In the evening, the last two calls, we again go over what time, what we are doing, and I remind her that it is written on her calendar. The problem is, I always fall asleep. I fall asleep reading only to wake up stiff. And the last thing I recall is my husband saying to me, he's going to bed and me responding, I'll be right in. And guess what happens? Uh, Waking up uh, to mom's call and what is the next time I will pick her up. And this is how the, and this will be how the day progresses. 
But this is a perfect time for us to pause here, and I'll pick up Joyce's description of how the typical day would progress. You're listening to It's All About You live on BBM Global Network and tune in radio and come back and let's listen to Joyce's typical day. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, and you're listening to It's All About You, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Before the break, I was talking about Joyce, and uh, I was going to say, tell you about her typical day when we came back. So here it goes. Joyce says her typical day starts out like this. Um, I go to the assigned time, Dr. Latz, and I pick her up. And uh, today, uh, the the activities was a doctor's appointment, and then we go grocery shopping afterwards. We're sitting in the waiting room of the doctors, and we talk about the questions she ha- she has for the nurse and for the doctors. And I jot them jot a few no- notes down so I could jog her memory uh, or get more information is uh, is as needed. We're called in, and she goes in, and the first thing the doctor says to her, how is everything going? And she says, everything is fine. And I say, Ma, what about this? You know, you wanted to talk about your frequent dizzy spells. She repeats very strongly, I am fine. You see, this is frustrating for me, Dr. Latz, because I am not her health care surrogate. My brother is, and he lives out of town. I'm on the front of lines with her, and, um, and in the end, all alone with what goes on at the doctor's office. So we leave the doctor's office, and I have little or no information, no resources, and just new prescriptions. Then we go, we drop the prescriptions off, and we go to lunch. Then we go grocery shopping, and I go back to pick up the prescriptions with her, and they're not ready, right? That usually happens. Sorry about that, Joyce, I know about that feeling. And then she says, uh, Mom looks at me, and she says to me, "Will will you pick them up later? I'm thinking, well, of course I will. Uh, And then, uh, oh, by the way, will you stop at the cleaners? I agree to do that. I get her, I get my mom at home and settled in. And Dr. Lance, before I could clear her development, she's on the phone asking me also to pick up a couple of bananas on my way back with her prescription. 
Dr. Lance, I left my house at about 8.30 in the morning, and I am I, now I get home about 3.30 in the afternoon, and I feel lucky. Don't get me wrong. I love my mother. I'm exhausted. I feel like I live in the car, and, well, my day is gone. And my, then, oh, my phone is ringing again, and it's mom. I wonder how many of you listening can relate to Joyce, okay? Um, let's see if we can help Joyce here. So give me a call. Joyce, here are my thoughts and a few suggestions. What you're describing is very common to caregivers, especially when they're caregiving someone with a medical condition. This is the caregiver's medical reality. They complain about something, uh, they're, they're not happy, they're, so that when you get them to the doctor, everything magically disappears. The sec, you know, so it's like, okay, that has to be really clear. When she jots, when she tells you about her questions and what she wants to just jot down those questions so that you can speak to the doctor. It might be a good idea to talk to your brother to see how you can uh, step in there when he's out of state and you're right there in front of the doctor. Think about how you can work that out with him. I would also su- suggest that you find a professional to speak with, a professional therapist. My suggestion would be a marriage and family therapist because this is happening happening within your family and it's happening within your marriage and within all of your other relationships within the family. And marriage and family therapists have um, a complete understanding of this. They know what it's like to be on the gerbil wheel you find yourself uh, on, and they can offer you more um, inclusive solutions so that you're not repeating the same old behavior or the same old thought process and getting more frustrated and exhausted. The other benefit of having a professional to speak to is, well, we all need a non-judgmental person to speak with. And it not our family members or our friends, who you will see and your mother will see very often. That can become very uncomfortable, not only for you, not only for your mother, but also for family members and friends. The third suggestion I would give is uh, learn how to maximize your time and your effort with your mother. Now, that sounds like it's all going to fall on you, but uh, some of the things you can do is you can think about it in a different manner. Those repetitive questions with the repetitive phone calls, with the repetitive telling them where they're going, we've all experienced it whether it's been with um, our own children or grandchildren or with uh, nieces and nephews, that repetitive, are we there, are we there yet? Or uh, what time is it? And you just told them what time it is two minutes ago. Um, Or how many days? And you've told them the days. You know what I'm getting at, okay? Um, There's a way to get really creative here with it. Um, possibly Echo Spot because you can program that. And it can do just about anything needed. The calendar, photos, uh, viewable phone calls. That might be a good place um, to, to go. Or call her. Instead of waiting for her to call you, you call her first thing in the morning. Um, and make sure she has one of those alert system, but that'll give her a job because you're going to say, Ma, you're going to ask her to make sure you call her by a certain time. Say, Mom, I'm going to give you a call by nine, by nine o'clock. And if I'm late, she then calls you, gives her a little bit more of, um, you know, of a job being more inclusive and not just relying on you and driving you a little bit, you know, crazy on that. Uh, remember that often repetition, whether it's questions or repeated phone calls, you've said that your mother has not been diagnosed with any early onset or any, pro- uh, any progression of dementia or Alzheimer's. 
just remember, um, just remember that it's boredom, and remember that um, you know it can be that coming from the back seat. What you what you um, hear. This is a great pay, place for us to pause because we're going to pick up what the daily burdens over time do to the caregiver and how they build up. So we're going to pause here. I uh, can't wait to come back. Stay tuned so you can listen to what to do with your daily overburdened time schedule. You've been listening to It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz, live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I'll catch you on the other side for overtime. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, and you're listening to It's All About You, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Before the break, we were talking about um, how uh, overtime, we were just leaving off at overtime and how uh, uh, caregivers are feeling like they are constantly in overtime. Um, and then those overtimes, whether it's time, whether it's um, repetitive phone calls, whether it's just just natural um, coming into your life, over the over the long distance will build resentments and dissatisfaction over the role that you you took on lovingly. Like Joyce was expressing, she loves her mother, and she was happy to do that. But over time, it was it's taking its toll. Two of the most surprising interactions are that are direct results of uh, resentment and dissatisfaction uh, become resistance and non-participation from the person you're caring for, and this is what's been going on with Joyce and her mother, Joyce. Uh, is that your mother is building up resistance to you and she is now not participating in uh, this whole interaction that you are generously giving to her. Keep that in mind with this next example um, that came to me. I I was sent a text. It says, my sister-in-law and I live in different states, Joyce, and we've been caring for our parents since our late teens. My sister lives in town 10 minutes from our family home, and we're both in the healthcare industry. She is hands-on, and I live, um, and I live uh, in, another, in another state and in another city. Um, 
So we, we do the continuity and coordination of care. We check in with each other daily. This means that we, you know, we call each other at the beginning of the day, in the middle of the day, and in the evening just before retiring. Not long calls, not long texts, not long emails. So, in the, so what happens is that we are also reachable. Um, and there's also the endless emergencies occurring in the hospital stays. My sister has the burden for that, but I have the coordination, <clears throat> excuse me here, <clears throat> I have the coordination of coordinating the receiving of my, the, the person we're caring for at the hospitals. I fly up at least two to three times a month. I can work remotely so I can do that. My sister cannot. Oh, we both are married, and this and this is not perfect at the end of the day, but we hold each other accountable for our end of the agreement, trying to steal alone time with our spouses and up uh, dating our family members. So we're trying to coordinate in town and out of town like you had expressed, Joyce. So here I want to stop. So this person is giving this example. If we think about it, more and more caring for elderly and sick family members and friends are being coordinated by in and out of state caregivers. That poses a whole different challenge because you're not both within the same uh, city or state. Okay. And this places pressure on an already overloaded medical caregiving situation. It's a very fragile ecosystem, like the example from above, both sisters. Um, The solution is to try to enlist even more and more extended uh, extended family members or friends. And this would happen like if the person is hospitalized, they would give out the information. You and your sister uh, would not have to do it. You wouldn't be left to do it, Joyce, giving that report. Um, When you give when you give out information. only once. This is not perfect, but it does take the burden off of both of you. It work. It does work, and in in so on so many levels, uh, you know how much information because you've given it to that person who's agreed to do that for you, and who's getting it, and the direct calls before and after the nurses at the nurses stations are greatly reduced so that they can. Uh, coordinate their care with your with uh, the patient, which is your your loved one, and other other patients on the floor. Um, it gives um, it gives rest and recovery to all of your uh, caregivers. Uh, you know, um, people in their mid sixties and and uh, and up. All the caregivers are saying, "Hey, you know what? It feels like forever." So this is what we want to do, such a little different situation here. So think about the people that you can enlist. You might want to check out www.caringbridge.org. It, um, it can help with so many tasks, and it will make your life as a caregiver so much easier. Uh, so much, uh, so much more enriched in another way. Let me know what you think about that. When we, when we feel like we have been caring for ever and ever, um, what was the interesting situation is that I had had something passed to me for about a gentleman. He did not give his name, and uh, he says, "I've been caring for my mom who has dementia and multiple other health issues, and I've been doing this for years. I have siblings that live in the area, but they provide little or no help with my mom. And they they say that because I am on a fire rescue team. And to quote them, you've been trained in this situation, but I'm I'm becoming exhausted." What they don't understand is that what they don't understand is that I have I don't do this for an extended period of time like I do for my mother. 
let's let's take a pause here because we'll pick up and see what this gentleman continues to talk about. It's very interesting that he is in a field for this and yet he's taken total responsibility. So you've been listening to It's All About You um, on VBM Global Network and it's time for our break and we'll pick up and find out uh, what the rest of uh, this gentleman's story is about caregiving. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Wait No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Wait No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Wait No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Wait No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, for It's All About You live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So we've been talking about caregivers, and we were talking about um, the person who was on the fire and rescue team. And he had quoted that his family members say, you've been, you've been trained for this um, situation. But he, he explains that um, it's not for extended periods of time. Um, uh, for my mother, if they do uh, do something for me, they just don't get it because what they do is they'll dump it all on me when I when I get off of work. For example, he was he's describing uh, his relief now has become um, is when he's at the fire station or when he's at the station, and he's finding himself as he says requesting more and more overtime only to find that my mother's care, all of it, is waiting for me at the end of the shift because I know what to do. I'm finding, he continues on, that he has no social life. Uh, His blood pressure is out of the roof. His stress is um, over the top. And he ends with, but mom comes first, right? But I'd like to respond to that. And um, what I think is happening here is that your family members are caught in that old idea. And I still believe it holds true. There is only one primary caregiver, whether you live in town or out of town, who handles the health burdens of all family members. So think about that for a moment. And then we have to think about how the roles are changing. People are living longer, and so are caregivers living longer. And they're also finding themselves, the caregivers, in a dual role, not only caregiving, but that they have become uh, caregivers for their own medical conditions or their own chronic health needs. But what happens is they're submerging them, their need for quiet time, downtime. But something must give. 
just saying something must give. And I think this is where providers, meaning long-term providers like uh, the doctors you take, your uh, mother too, or other members, are failing the people who are caregivers um, and in elderly care. Dr. Um, Max Zusby, uh, LMFT, says providers often mistake caregivers' anxiety or uh, stress with uh, a flaw in their thinking or behavior. Instead, it really is a normal response to the ambiguity of the caregiver situation that is also requiring observation, treatment, and intervention. This is often chronic and it goes unrecognized and undiagnosed by the entire healthcare system. That's where a mental health LMFT could be um, very helpful for caregivers. Yet this is a very easy, treatable condition. Um, when the attention is solely given on the previously established parent, uh, patient, okay, we have there there becomes a, an inequality, not because there wants to be, but it just happens. In checking out uh, caregiversconversation.org, there they list out a list of stress for the person who is offering care. So this is something uh, come on closer and maybe jot a few notes about this. Um, if you find yourself angry um, that this is the way things are. Think about that. How many times you might be saying to yourself, you know what, this is the way things are and the emotion or the feeling that you're feeling is anger. If you're anxious about that, there's another day coming or that the other, another day begins and you're not really looking forward to that. If you become very, very defensive about your loved one's conditions and the effects on others, this means that if you're questioned about your loved one's condition or the effects, meaning that they what they're seeing or not seeing, that they think. Um, if you're very, very exhausted uh, and you have too many, many many sleepless nights because it's filled with concerns. Your mind is not shutting off. Or this is one I found interesting, being embarrassed about the behaviors of the person you are caring for. Uh, then you go on to the frustrations. Remember, this is a stress checklist for you caregivers. You go on frustrated that you're missing out on life physically or mentally or both at the same time. Your life is just going by you. You seem to be getting irritated, unirritable, uh, that nothing is going to go right, no matter if the day starts going wrong, if uh, doctors are late, or if, if uh, the car has uh, to go into the shop, or routines are altered, you're, you feel like nothing goes right in your life. If you find yourself that you're rushing all the time, you're not slowing down, this is another sign, caregivers, that you're over, you're stressed. Um, sad and uncomfortable as, as just being in this role, role. So what I want you to think about, if you have answered yes to four or more of this, you need to talk to a health care provider. You need support and care too. Did you know the expectation of all baby boomers uh, to provide 40 years of personal health and fi financial assistance for the multiple aging family members? Just think about it, baby boomers. Uh, you're going to be you're providing 40 years of personal care and financial assistance for family members. But it's not only the baby boomers. The millennials are emerging at the rate of 25% plus, and it is rapidly picking up for care of the older generations. Um, I've just gotten past um, a note uh, 
that I need to look at, and it uh, it's on this very topic. So this is time for a, from Ben. So this is time to pause, and Ben, I'll get get to you about it. Um, so you've been listening to Dr. Martha on It's All About You, coming to you live from BBM Global Network, and we'll see what Ben has to say on the other side of the break when we come back. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha Latz, and I'm coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Before the uh, break, I uh, said that on the back side, we would talk about what Ben was talking to me about. So let's see what Ben had to say in his um, in his note. Um, he was he was talking about. Um, Uh, what does this mean for us caregivers exactly? It sounds like it's more of the same old, same old. And you know what? Um, Maybe it does, Ben, but I was trying to get to, I'm getting to the fact of how you will benefit exactly. So let's break all of this down. You've answered, you know that on the stress list, you're already there because you've answered four or more of the questions, yes. And... um, Ben, think about how many of the personal things you have had to reschedule or cancel altogether that you would not think of doing for the person you're caring for. Just things like dental appointments, medical exam. So if you're not feeling good with your with not feeling good and you're feeling cranky well that's going to affect how you position yourself in the um uh, world if you're getting headaches and you haven't been to the eye doctor for a while it's time for you to do it but you've looked at your calendar and you've rescheduled that i don't know how um how how long that's been or what about the tooth that you finally got except um uh, uh, extracted, and now you want to put, you want to uh, replace it with a, a dental implant, but your jawbone needs to be re- restored before that happens because you put it off for for so uh, so long. Um, or the grooming, and then don't ask, and don't ask that about your errands. Um, I kind of think um, Ben and Joyce. These are checkpoints that you might not be kind to yourself. Now that sounds, and it's a lot of you out there, we're not being kind to ourselves because we begin to think, how often are you beginning to think, I want to escape? Um, 
being kind to yourself and to create the life. According to author Brianna West, you're not trying to escape from. And this is particularly challenging for caregivers. I think this should be placed at the center of all of our days. Um, Do I really like my life or I really like my life? And find out how often you find yourself thinking the opposite or saying it out loud. I don't like my life. This is not what I thought my life would be. This is not uh, this is uh, not what I signed on for. Or as um, several of you said, this is another full-time job and I'm not getting paid for. I'm caregiving 20 to 30 hours in addition every week and I'm not getting paid for. So how did these starts uh, these thoughts get started? <sighs> okay, now stop. Once you ought to stop, Breathe in and exhale slowly and listen closely. When we start um, thinking about these thoughts and we think we are caregiving on a good day, the position that's there is we often treat ourselves as an employee. Think about that. You're the employee there. There are goals. You're reporting uh, to earn a reward or an incentive, and that incentive will be me time. It doesn't happen. Or even on a bad day, you're, um, you're relentlessly driving yourself to the point of exhaustion. You have to do more. You have to do, uh, you have to do more and more of what you're doing. That reminds me of a, um, a story this whole being kind to yourself and uh, learning how to be kind to yourself about the farmer, the horse, the full court, the carrot, and going to market. So if you want a story, listen closely. Instead of finding ourselves reaching for the chocolate, the credit card, or escape into video games and online fantasy. So the story goes something like this. A farmer had his cart filled with all of what he was going to bring to market, and it was filled to the top. And he got on his um, cart, and his horse was in was hooked up, and he had a carrot, and the carrot was on a dangling stick, and it would just be dangling in front of the horse's nose. That's when he wanted to go faster. And he would do it over and over and over again. And the horse would go and try to get it. And eventually what would ha- what happened was the horse never got it. And the horse was exhausted because he was pushing himself beyond his physical limits. And guess what? He's draw exhaustion. And he stops. We don't want to get you to that, uh, that place in time. It's much like, you know, the self-kindness that I'm talking about is when we fly. How many of us have flown? And the flight attendant gives uh, instructions regarding the oxygen mask, right? You pull it down. If it falls in front of you, you pull it down. You extend the hose uh, so the flow would start. And you place the oxygen mask on on yourself and then you can help those around you think about that it's very simple we've all heard it but think about that um you lose it if you you lose it when you think to yourself if you want something done right um you have to do it yourself so you've got to lose that thought process and ask for help. Make lists to help you caregivers out there. We're all doing this to enlist the help that you would you would like and place it and have it ready by your phone or on your phone in a moment's notice so that you can share um, uh, share it. What goes into making that list? Really simple. You know the people in your family members or your friends who, who um, are good at something. Those who are good at phone calls and gathering information and following up, voila, there you are. Uh, there's 
there is some there is a place there or ask ask for professional guidance and community resources for your state like in florida it's www.floridahealthfinder.gov this is an, an easy initial support area for you we'll get to the other planning places and planning stages to help us out Uh, But this is a good part for us to pause and to break. So you've been listening to Dr. Martha on It's All About You live on BBM Global Network. And on the other side, we'll be talking about gathering and pre-planning and mental health professionals. Uh, see See you in a bit. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha on It's All About You, coming to you live again on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Before the break, we were talking about um, how you would go about helping and, and what you would do to give yourself your own oxygen flow uh, when you're caregiving. And this, is, this was important. We talked about identifying the strengths of your family members, those who are good at phone calls, those who love to grocery shop, those who love to, um, you know, like to uh, sit and uh, read to uh, the individual or share uh, with the individual. You know what I'm talking about. So that that takes a little bit of burden off of you when someone hands you all the information you need or to ask for the professional help and guidance and community resources. And I've said to you that each state uh, ha- has that. Um, like it in Florida, it's uh, floridahealthfinder.gov and that's the initial support area to go. Um Gather often with all of the people in your family, either by text or emails, about the continuity of care and progression and the transitional part of the care. Uh, and this can be done by uh, the designated person who is um, who has been designated to disseminate that information. Um, pre do pre planning by building your consensus before it has to be in the vital areas for the tra- taking care of the progression and transition of care uh, for the individual and for how the duties would be uh, shared. Find a mental health professional. Um, 
a, ma- a family and marriage situation, uh, a therapist. Remember that they are skilled with family-based interventions. They are skilled with everything that has to do with the family and the extensive family. Um, every family member has a skill, and they would be helpful to you to uncover that. Also to guide maybe a general meeting if you possibly can. Um Letting go of micromanaging every detail, it's exhausting. Um, You need to use your word and ask for what you really want. And three things can happen. You will get it, you won't get it, or you will get a compromise. We are just starting this conversation. Uh, We are asking that we all be winners and that we're not going to be building resentments because we're all going to find ourselves in it or we're already in a caregiving mode. So this conversation is just starting. And in part, this is an uncharted path because we're all living longer, something where between 20 to 30 years longer. And with this expanded life cycle, this is a uh, work in progress. So I'm inviting all of you to enjoy it, to join in the conversation. Um, caregiving puts a strain on our other relationships. So we need to find Uh, easy relationship tips to support our other relationships. I'm thinking that maybe the next topic for uh, next week is the blocks for building or reviving an outstanding relationship and marriage uh, in, in the uh, place of our, in the place of our um, caregiving. Let me know, you know, As I'm sitting here, I just got a little buzz in my ear. Our time is just flown by. Um, In the meantime, send me send me and let uh, send me an email uh, on what you think about this. I want to say until next time, stay safe, laugh fully, smile often, stay in touch. Thanks for listening. This is Dr. Martha on It's All About You, broadcasting live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm saying goodbye until we say hello again next Thursday. You've been listening to It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Join us next week as we explore solutions and resolutions to some of your most challenging moments on Dr. Martha Latz, It's All About You. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.